as part of our um, inter and intra communication, um, he is going to present watershed issues in Calaveras County and how they impact us. And I'll be quick, obviously. So uh, normally this is a two and a half hour presentation, but I'll cut it down to like 20 minutes or less. So um, I started working on a watershed program for Calaveras County when I realized that uh, we are, that's what we are, the watershed. Uh, we have uh, very little industry in Calaveras County because of, uh, because of the many issues around environmentalism and that, and that sort of thing. And so over the years, um, you know, we went from, we've always been a resource county, but uh, we started off with uh, uh, mining. We started off with, uh, you know, we were the gold rush uh, place, right? Uh, we, we had uh, timber industry, uh, many mines. Uh, we had a cement plant there for many years, started in 1926. And so we had industry. And then uh, it just it dissipated, it went away. But what we do have, what we do have is water. And as a matter of fact, we have, we supply through, just through Calabrese County, one third of all the water that goes into the San Joaquin Basin. And we also supply uh, water to East Bay Mud, which goes over to East Bay, that's about a million and a half customers over there. So uh, Alpine is our headwaters. Alpine and Calaveras uh, is, is actually really important uh, to all of you. So as it stands right now, what has happened is, is our economy has diminished over time. Uh, largely because of the loss of all, all the industries that were there and for, for many reasons. Uh, mostly, I think, because California recognized that we are a great water source. And we have to take care of that. And, and I believe that um, they're not going to let anything happen to it. So we have all the things that a lot of you have right now because of your drought. And I think it's in 2015. You're up around two and a half million dollars just in ag losses. That doesn't include um, all of the other residual losses that happened. That's two and a half billion dollars. That's a lot. So we have uh, wildfire danger. We just experienced that one, all right? So you guys are getting chocolate water now, all right? And 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 it's coming down uh, in in a great amount, and it's bringing a lot of sediment with it. Uh, diminished property values, uh, low uh, property tax revenue, all of this stuff, which you already know about. Eroding communities, flood zones remain unmanaged. That's been happening since the beginning of time. We've never really paid attention to it. So what we have, though, is we have a beautiful area that burns like this when it burns because of the ladder fuels. So it doesn't just burn. It shoots out these ambers for a mile or so in every direction, and you cannot control that. And when that happens, it burns to this. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing to hold. When it rains, there's nothing to hold the water back. There's nothing to hold the sediment back. And there's toxins involved. We had uh, over 900 structures that burned in our fire, 900 homes. And, and well, some of them were homes, and some of them were kind of home light homes. Um, so there are many terrible consequences of that. And I'll tell you right now as a supervisor, especially in District 1 where I am, when you see those people filing out of the area into my district and coming to me for help, it has a profound effect on you. Because you know that their house could have been right there and that's what it looks like now. So we also have in rangeland this. So we have an unmanaged rangeland as well. And it burns just the same. And it causes just the same problems. And it costs just the same amount to fight it and restore it. When it rains, like it did recently, we're pretty darn lucky actually because the rains come, they didn't come real hard, they backed off, they came again, they didn't come real hard and they backed off. We were pretty darn lucky that, uh, this year because if we'd have got one inch in in a uh, well uh, if, in an hour, uh, 
you guys would have had most of our land in your reservoirs. <laughs> and that's a fact. We, did, we were lucky we didn't have too many debris flows. We were able to kind of manage them, you know, and largely because of the consorted effort from a lot of the nonprofits in the area to go out and try to do some erosion control, like uh, Culver's growing up there. They did, they're still doing an amazing job. And I can tell you that FEMA and Cal uh, OES uh, doesn't really help you with that, because largely we are about 75% privately owned properties. So they're, you know, they mostly uh, get involved with, with properties that are, are not privately owned. So this, this happened uh, a few years back. Can you imagine, and this is in Valley Springs, which is real close to here. So what do you think is, we're bringing down to you here? Everything. <laughs> Including sewers. So this is un unintended uh, consequences. Uh, we have a uh, uh, an issue up there where the puck rows are happening way back in the woods, in, in areas we don't even know about. And so they make illegal diversions like this, which they put chemicals in, by the way, which goes into the groundwater. And there's a good example of a bust. That was a cartel bus. So if you look at some of these containers here, I don't know how they got them in the US, but some of that's chlorodam. Some of it is fur dam. Fur dam was, uh, was uh, uh, taken off the market 11, uh, 11 years ago and does not now, is not now produced in the US. What are they using it for? What they use it for is uh, vegetation. Uh, and, and, uh, killing vegetation around their pot growth, but they also soak uh, meat in it, and then they throw it out so the animals will eat it. It kills the animal, and they don't come in and bother their pot growth. So, so uh, it's kind of a gruesome situation, but it's real. And uh, uh, we don't have the resources really to be able to control all of that. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why I'm here today, to, to try to present something to you that makes sense. This is, a, this is a, a, a one of the cartel uh, young men that got busted. He, he, he doesn't know, so he mixes it all with his hands. So leaping into the future. Now, the, the problem is, is you, you, you got to you got to be able to figure out how to balance your environment concerns with your economics, because it costs money to manage anything. So we have 23 major streams and canals that exist through Calaveras, and they feed into our lakes and reservoirs. Uh, and there is a lot of the, the stream bed alteration, erosion, pollutants, sediment transfer, and illegal diversions, all the way from the forest down to the basin. Right? You can't section it off. If you're going to do something up here, you have to be able to do something here because this is going to affect this. So if you're going to do some vegetation removal, like, by the way, we have a serious problem right now with uh, bug kill, right? So we're looking at about 80% mortality in Calaveras County with the, with the bug kill. And that's going to have a profound effect on the watershed. Because when they start clearing all that stuff out, water's going to come flowing at a little higher volume because you get a better yield out of it and it's going to have an effect all the way down the line. And this is what we look like as Calaveras County. You can see why you can see why we're just kind of what we are, right? We're a watershed. We're not going to be anything else. So we have Pardee, Comanche, New Hogan, New Maloney's, Salt Springs, there's two of them. One up here, one here. Spicer and Tullock. That's just in one, our little, one little county. This all affects you people. This is your water source. So, so I thought, well, you know what? What we, what we should do, really, is we should try to figure out a way where we can reinvest back into our greatest resource. And um, I don't know anybody that runs a business that doesn't do that. So if you drive your car for a while, you better put some oil in it. Right? If you have a house, you want to paint it once in a while, otherwise it's going to deteriorate. 
Well, we have a watershed and we have a county that has been basically denied the opportunity to have an industrial relationship with almost anybody <laughs> except tourism and a little bit of agriculture. We're mainly an ag county. So what we want to do is create a, a program that produces value through proper watershed management. And the value would, uh, the program will create a healthier forest, rangelands, and basins, encourage agencies to work together, which is what we're trying to do here, by the way, reinvest, uh, reinvest in our greatest resources, water is our greatest resource, protect property rights through program incentives, we're trying really hard to do that here too. Uh, so we need to uh, create policies to streamline regulation where possible, a balanced environment and economic future, healthy communities and sustainable water supply and uh, program value for stakeholder investment. If you don't have a healthy community up here where we are in Calaveras County, it will affect you because we can't, we aren't able to manage the negative effects of what affects you with your water supply. Good example is this fire. We had 70, almost 73,000 acres burned. And a lot of it is from, it goes into the Calaveras uh, watershed. It's on the Jesus Maria area, it comes into the Calaveras watershed. That is, if you've seen what flows down that river, and I, I know that uh, folks from Stockton East have seen it, 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 it is a little bit uh, certain. And we don't know how long that's gonna, how long that's gonna last. So we, so I developed this uh, program to, to maybe help figure out a way to get people together and maybe we can resolve this issue. We don't even have an RCD in our county, Resource Conservation District. So got together with LAFCO, we have, we've, we've uh, taken that step, and now, oops, I'm not real good with these unless there's a TV attached. Uh, it'll be on the ballot in June. The RCD is a perfect tool, or a perfect uh, uh, vehicle to be able to manage a program like this, because it's not gonna happen through the county. The county can't really do anything for private property owners, and we are largely private property owners. So RCD can help manage this program. Uh, and I'm sure that all of you, in the interest of time, knows what an RCD does. So ours would be a seven-member board of directors, uh, one director representing each supervisor of district, a director uh, representing the ag community, and a, uh, five directors, one for each uh, district, supervisor of district. That makes it a very balanced uh, group that will have a good interest in agriculture and water is their main focus through conservation. So it would encompass uh, the county from border to border and becoming a central uh, point for Calaveras County projects. And I just wanted to talk about that just for a moment. What we have right now is the, the state and they're interested in doing great projects for the environment, great projects for making, keeping our environment healthy, okay? At about, from 10 different ways, or 100 different ways. So we have money going to a group here, money going to a group here, and, and so on and so forth, and it really never connects the dots to produce value, okay? And, and that would be the goal is to try to centralize this so that we can, as a county can manage our destiny and, 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 and we can have a better uh, under, uh, control over what happens in our county so that we can, because we're responsible. When this fire uh, burnt us, we're the ones that have to deal with it. We're the ones that have to react to it. And we're the ones going to have to pay for it. So, this is a, uh, an example of what it could look like. So when, when, a, when a fire burns through here, it burns low, it might burn some of this, these shrubs off, and it could be a natural fire. It could burn for a month, and it would never hurt anything. 
you get your greatest snowpack out of something like this, right? Your snowpack is what's going to keep your water supply going at the longest rate possible over time. It meters out. The idea is to try to maximize your snowpack level and keep it there as long as possible. So you have to manage your forest to be able to to be able to shade it during the day and then uh, so it can meter out. The slower the process for water, the better chance you have of managing it, the less erosion control issues you have, and the more groundwater you get. And that's what this is about, right? Groundwater. So your meadows will come back uh, in a healthier fashion, and you have a slower flow rate of water. Doesn't quite look like the other one that was burnt up, does it? This is the range area, rangeland area. And there have been a lot of studies done on this over the years. Um, I started this because of a gentleman, his name was Dan Irvine, and he was a farm advisor back from 1960 until 1983. He's 94 years old now. And I had a really nice long conversation with him, and he, he just kind of made me do this. Uh, so um, he did studies on all of it and, and proved that it works, including the water yield portion of it. You guys do a great job in the, in the in the down here in the valley, and I remember uh, I lived in Tracy for 23 years. Uh, it used to be flooded quite a bit, and then they started putting in these basins, a lot of these basins, and it stopped a lot, a lot of the flooding, and it also captured that uh, water that was running out to the ocean and put it back into the ground, so it perked back into the ground. And that's what we'd like to do in our basin too, which is just, a, it's, it's actually connected to the San Joaquin Basin. For, for, to help pay for uh, some of this program, there are many uh, natural resources that we could use. So when you, when you uh, take your vegetation and you start reducing, you start managing your forest and rangeland properly, you could do things like uh, purification process, which uh, makes pellets, biochar, and things like that from the biomass that will be produced from, yeah. from the uh, from the wood, you know, from your wood and stuff like that. Uh, that would that all of that produces better water when you're managing better. Even uh, in in Europe, they even use these portable generators, and they go out and they connect. Instead of uh, shipping two biomass plants, they just tie in uh, somewhere locally, and they and they're able to produce electricity locally. So there's a lot of out of box thinking there. So we, got, we need to put calibers to work, developing new methods, uh, developing educational opportunities and creating jobs so that we can have a better watershed for you. Really, it give us a better life, but also the benefit is, is tremendous for you. And so that's it, basically. It's quick. I hope you can read between the lines. I know I had to be really quick today. Uh, Calibers uh, Watershed Pilot Program is fully engaged in bringing the principles of science and conservation the development and implementation of a comprehensive, big words, collaborative countywide program. So the best way to predict your future is to create it. And this kind of goes along with what we're trying to do right here. We're trying to predict our future, got to create it. Uh, we think that the best way for you to get the greatest yield out of us is by helping us manage uh, the watershed that supplies you with greatest resources that you're talking about right now. So that's what I have. Thank you very much. Cliff, that was great. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Cliff? Okay. Um, 